Hey everyone. Last week I shared with you the four pillars of trust model and a little story that I had around uh, competency, which is one of those four pillars. Well, it generated a few comments and I thought this week I would talk to you about disclosure and not about disclosure on an interpersonal level, on a one-on-one -on -one conversation level, but what does it look like to build trust through disclosure at an organizational level? So, uh, what I'm going to share with you today is the framework that I've used to share uh, information with teams uh, from the people that are on the front line right up to the executive uh, for multi-million dollar programs. And this is hard one. So uh, for those of you that are on the podcast, I apologize in advance. This is going to be a little visual, but I'll try and talk you through it as best I can. Um, you might want to go and catch up on YouTube. For the rest of you, though, uh, we're going to share some photos and uh, you'll actually be able to download the slides and, uh, and take a look at those after the fact as well. So, first up, what you're looking at here is a picture of the very first uh, visual management tool that I built. Uh, that is me with short hair in my mid-twenties <laughs> on our first Agile program. Uh, this photo's done the rounds. It's appeared in a few different places, but uh, those of us who were here at the time love it. It was This was a team that had been brought together. Uh, they'd never done Agile before. I was still working as a project manager at this point, and, um, and we sort of decided we were going to try this new way of working, and we threw ourselves all in. So as you can see, we painted the walls in nice bright colors. The uh, facility team wasn't thrilled about that, uh, but we were in an old building and it was sort of end of life and going to get a redecorate anyway at some point. So we kind of got away with it, which was great. Um, but what you're looking at is there's two really big open walls that we use to run this entire program. And we, by the end of it, we were spending uh, around $100 million a year on this program. It was a team of software engineers who were building software for call centers large corporate, um, like really great team. We all had a whole heap of fun, but this is the tool that we use to run the entire program. So we didn't do schedule updates. We didn't do risks and issues registers. We didn't do tracking and reporting. We, uh, every chance we got, we brought people to the wall and we talked them through the story. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. So these slides will be available to download as the framework on uh, at the bottom of the post and you're welcome to replicate this in your own environment. I actually use this all the time when I'm going into new clients because it's a really great introduction to visual management tools and uh, and it's just it's really powerful like it works there's a reason why um, why I keep going back to it so the wall itself is decided, desi divided <laughs> into five kind of big frames if you like so we work from left to right top to bottom it's how our brains in western culture tend to prioritize things start in the top left and sort of work your way through so at the far left hand side you'll find a large frame uh, which was all of the big ideas then as we go further towards the right there's another frame that says this is the quarterly plan this is a work we plan to do in the next three months Step to the right again, you have a two to four week plan of the work that we're actually doing that's in execution. Uh, and ideally, at the point that you've done that work, it would be done. But as I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, in large corporates, often to get your software into production, um, there's a whole operations process that needs to be followed and a whole deployment team and kind of this whole separate group of people that need to be engaged. And so the this team actually built an entirely separate, what they called a deployment wall, so that we could track how our software was being moved into production. And then right at the very end, we captured our achievements and we called it done done, because at that point it was actually out there in the wild delivering value to customers. So that's the overall frame. Here's another shot of the wall again, just to orient yourself. And I'm going to step you through, step by step, what we did at each of these frames. So what were the pieces that fitted into place? So at the far left-hand side, we start with big ideas. This was a place that we visited infrequently, I guess, if you like. It was a place to capture ideas. Um, any old thing could kind of go up there. Uh, and it was a space for collecting and collating and coming back to. 
So we didn't revisit this very frequently, um, but it was a point that anybody could come and sort of throw ideas up on the um, up on the wall, and, um, and and we could look to pursue them at a later date. As we move along the wall, the three month plan we actually framed up what the quarterly plan looked like, and so at this point we've gone from an idea, and somebody usually a few people have spent some time to validate whether or not that's an opportunity that we want to go ahead with. And so once that's happened, then pieces of work started to fall into the three month plan and we'd prioritize them based on um, which particular areas we were focusing on. Um, I've actually drawn it in the diagram as swim lanes, because if you've got a program that's hitting off multiple different strategic kind of features or strategic pillars, uh, in the organization, then you can start to streamline and see where are you actually having an impact against that higher level uh, set of governing principles. So the three month plan, we designed our work in quarterly chunks, if you like, and the three month plan, you could see at any one point what we had going, what we thought we were going to be working on next quarter. Keep moving across to the right and you hit the two to four week plan. Now this was a really simple uh, Kanban board. It's where the team spent most of their time. So we divided this area up into three columns. To do, doing, done. And what happened was every two weeks, the team would start their two-week chunk of work. Um, they'd have a conversation about what they aimed to achieve in that two-week period. We would pull the work in from the three-month plan into that to-do column. And then they'd go away and run with it for two weeks. We get to the end of that period, would review what was done, make some decisions about what to do next, and the whole process would sort of start all over again. And so we'd slowly eke away at what was sitting in that three-month plan view. Ideally, once you're done, you're done. However, uh, this team, because we had such a complicated and actually a, a really long lead time on the deployment process. Some of, in this case, um, when we started the program, the deployment timelines were sort of another three months on their own sometimes just to get stuff in. Uh, this team actually built kind of the same wall as what they had with their two to four week plan, but specifically around the deployment of work. So once something was done by the team, they moved it into a to-do column and for the deployment team to pick up and then manage through the operations process. And so in that way, we could continue that visibility, uh, not simply chucking it over the fence to the operations team to put in and manage and support and whatever you like, but actually follow it all the way through until it was done out in the wild serving our customers. And at the far right, done, done, we actually collected all of the pieces of work that we'd finished over that sort of three to six month period, bit of a celebration. Uh, you know, often when you move into a, a continuous delivery or, or a, an ongoing program like this, it can be hard to remember to stop and pause and take a moment to celebrate. So we actually collected all of the work that we'd done over a three to six month period and just let it sit in that done column for a while and kind of just reflected on that. <laughs> rather than um, than simply sort of crashing through into the next thing. Uh, There's actually a bit of pause and reflection. And the other thing that we did was we actually tracked what was happening with our work once customers got it into their hot little hands. Um, we tracked feedback, we tracked performance, and then all of those insights that we'd found from uh, seeing the work in production, then that fed back into the next big idea. So overall, the entire process with this team when we started could take sort of three to six months for something to go all the way through. By the time that we'd finished, I think the smallest piece uh, of, like the shortest time that we'd had for a piece of work to go through the wall was two weeks because part of what this framework did was it highlighted when things were waiting in line, you know, people got frustrated if things didn't move. And so there was a whole bunch of process improvement that just happened in the background um, and consciously by the team to improve things like the deployment process, to get really clear on the work before we started it. And so that meant that flow improved over the life of the program. So I'm going to leave you with one more slide, which is the overlay of the framework 
over the top of that beautiful brightly colored wall. Um, feel free to grab these slides and use them for your own teams and your own work. I hope you find it really useful and wherever you are in the world today, I hope you're having a wonderful day uh, and you go out there and smash it this week. <laughs>